like to give you a little insight into a home uh, project that I uh, had the same place for about 10 years. It's a flight simulator and uh, it basically consists of a crashed 150 Cessna 150F fuselage that I cut a section out of here. I cut it this way all along here so that I could get the bottom and the top up stairs into my den through the doorways and I keep them uh, attached together with uh, Clecos which is a little bullet like item here that holds plastic parts together and it secures them together. This airplane was cracked up on a landing by a student pilot and uh, destroyed and it was parted out so I was able to buy the fuselage and uh, made a nice cradle for it. It rolls around very readily here. I can uh, change positions with it. Very nice handy thing to have. I put a panel on the back here just to enclose the whole thing, which is kind of nice because you get the full effect of having a real cockpit closure around you. Now, when I got the thing, it didn't have any doors, of course, so I ordered these doors off eBay. They came from an airplane in Alaska. Didn't have any seats. This is out of a Piper Lance. And uh, I'll let you take a look inside here and we'll start another clip. As I said in the uh, first little clip, this is uh, a Cessna 150 Model F uh, airplane. Crashed on a uh, student pilot's landing, ran off the runway, turned over, and it became a total loss, and the airplane was parted out. And I mean parted out. All there was left when I bought it was the fuselage and and I cut it up uh, so that I could get it up into my den. These doors came from Alaska, from eBay. The seat that I'm sitting in is from a Piper Lance. I have rails built under these, this seat, and my intention was to be able to slide it fore and aft. And uh, I have SciTech equipment in here. This yoke is just fine. The SciTech quadrant here. I have um, a Real Sim Gears GNS 530. This is a wonderful addition to my flight simulator. I know where all these positions are and what all these buttons do, and I can operate this thing with my VR goggles on, which is fantastic. And since I know the positions of all the switches in my panel here, I can fly this plane with VR. Now, the problem with VR is I don't have any twisty dials for these instruments. But I've assigned the twist motions to these buttons on this quadrant here. This button down here will move the arrow in one direction. I use the top one, it'll move it the other direction so I can set my uh, course indicators with that. Um, I have an 8 switch uh, panel right here, autopilot on, altitude hold, heading hold, nav hold, approach, parking on off, and gear retraction here. So I can do all these neat things with my goggles on if I want to. So here are the goggles, Oculus Rift, I have a little extension on here that I bought as a secondary purchase in order to eliminate all the nasty marks you get around your face when you wear this for an extended period of time. 
That works out well. And of course you do need a pointer to point at certain things at certain times. Although I don't use this very much, I do use it a little. Um, I have a small keyboard. Don't need a big one, just a little one. I have a table right next to me here where that the mouse sits on. Perfect location. And uh, I have the ability, of course, the advantage with this setup like this is it's uncomplicated. I don't have any TVs in here, no TVs there. I don't need the views. Um, if I want to pan this way or this way, I can do that. And that's sufficient for 2D operation. But um, I do have to have a very powerful graphics card in here. And you're going to spend a lot of money to get a big, powerful graphics card with a lot of memory in it. I have an i5 processor in the computer that's quite adequate. And... Um, when uh, Flight Simulator 2020 becomes available, I'll give it a look, but I am a very big X-Plane fan, have been for years and years. I really, really like X-Plane because of all the function you get in it. The advantage of a simple setup like this is I can put any instrument panel in here I want. I'm not hardwired, and I don't have a lot of gauges and things in here that are, are going to limit me to that. So if tomorrow I want to fly a twin Comanche, I've got a twin operation here with my controls, and um, I can have the panel up here. If I want to fly a Piper Arrow, you can have an Arrow in here. So I like that flexibility because I fly probably five or six different airplanes quite a bit, the Baron being one fantastic airplane from Coronado. It really works like you want the thing to work. Probably the best, the best. But anyway, this is my operation and uh, I'm just loving it. I probably, well, I've had this thing for 10 years and uh, I probably have, well, I got hundreds of hours in this thing flying all kinds of approaches in all kinds of weather in any airport you want to select practically in the world um, under various weather conditions. Now, how good is that? It's just a real blast. So, oh yeah, I should add a half uh, pro pedals down here for the pedals. If you have any questions or comments, just give me a reply and uh, we, can, we can get together and talk about it. But um, I'm a big advocate of this approach. So go look for a crashed airplane, get the biggest TV you can put in it, keep it simple, keep it fun, keep your flexibility.